Hey what is up guys, Matt Cooper here aka MODC Architecture and welcome back to another video. Today what I'm going to be talking about is what subjects I studied at my secondary school or my college to get into university, to get into an architecture university. So let's get started. Okay what subjects did I study? Well first of all I didn't do A level, I did the International Baccalaureate. Now the International Baccalaureate is a sort of half coursework, half exam based uh, course and the reason why I did this was because I'm not very good at exams, I don't like exams, so definitely ask your school if that's an option, um, or look for a college where that's an option if you're more likely to succeed, or you think you're more likely to succeed with a coursework based um, course. Now, A-levels I didn't go with because, yeah, like I said, I'm terrible at exams um, and I just didn't like the appeal of cramming at the end and you know, respect to you guys who can do that because I'm super jealous because I would have loved to have been in that position where I could just remember things like that based off of two months of revision and then just bang it out an exam, smash it. But personally, I don't think exams are the best form of assessment because it all rides on one day and if you suddenly forget something um, that you had remembered for the past two months then and that's just your bad and that, and that just that just um, really affects your exam mark so I was never a fan of it but you know each to their own if you want to do A-levels I'll run over what subjects I would have done at A-level um, to go towards architecture but let's first off start with the International Baccalaureate. So the International Baccalaureate is um, divided up into higher standard or ab initio subjects and uh, then you have an essay and a presentation to do as well. So what I did was I did I did higher art, higher DT and higher business management and I did standard math, standard English and ab initio Spanish. So the reason why I did ab initio Spanish was because I really enjoyed Spanish at the time and you know I always wanted to go to Spain to live there for a year perhaps. Obviously it hasn't worked out and I can't do it now because of coronavirus but then you know I, I, I just like doing it and I enjoyed the subject. So next you've got your standards stuff, so my standard English and my standard maths. Maths obviously you need because you need that sort of, uh, you know, that understanding, that underlying understanding of architectural maths um, because you've got your structural stuff and that will come into your uh, technical studies so that's important to have. And then standard English is always good to have as well, it's a core subject so you have to do it in the International Baccalaureate. However. It is good to understand how to write a good essay, a sentence, a paragraph, whatever, because those sorts of things feature in your architectural portfolios or your architectural papers or, um, you know, booklets of submission, etc. whatever. You need it and you need it for later life as well. So it's always good to keep developing that. So higher stuff, I'll go higher business last because um, sort of more later on in your architectural career but I did higher art because obviously you need to be good at sketching uh, to do architecture you need to be able to communicate your ideas through a um, form of medium so art was definitely worthwhile. I developed my photoshop skills, my illustrator skills and my sketching skills through um, art, through higher art and I did high DT because it's always good to understand that uh, design process from the sketch to the final model and then all of that analysis and research that goes in between so I really got a grasp of what a basic university uh, design project would be like I suppose uh, and that rang true as well uh, that worked out for me really well because as I uh, saw the design process at university uh, I instantly switched back to that design and technology course that I did and um, it's helped me ever since definitely so I would recommend doing design and technology. So I decided to do a higher business and management because uh, as an architect there's always the chance that you're going to run your own firm if you're successful enough which obviously every architect is aiming to be. Why would you go into the field of architecture if you're not trying to be the best you can because you know you, ne you need to go for that you need to shoot for the stars because otherwise what's the point um, in my opinion at least. Um, <laughs> so I chose business and management because of the sort of because of the basic understanding of the finances of a business, the marketing, the uh, operations of a business, etc. You know, it's just important to understand those things so that then if you do want to become a CEO or the, you know, partner of an architecture firm, then you have that underlying, underlying knowledge so you don't have to sort of do a course while you're sort of on the way to getting a job or it prevent or your lack of knowledge present, prevents you from getting the job. You know, you need to, you just need to prepare for these things. So I, I did that. Um, and yeah, that's that's what I studied at International Baccalaure at the International Baccalaureate. I did you know this this brand of presentation. Um, I can't even remember what the presentation name was, but it was just an easy presentation which I, I got pretty high marks in. But everyone did really. Um, and then my 
dis and then my sort of dissertation type thing that you have to do with the International Baccalaureate, I actually did on the Hyperloop. Um, it was really interesting to me, um, and and I did okay in that. I didn't do as amazingly well, but you know that's because I ended up getting not the best marks uh, that I could have probably. I probably didn't get the best marks that I could have at um, the college that I was at. And then that led me to go into clearing because I originally was going to go to either Bath or Edinburgh, but I ended up going to the University of Brighton through clearing and now obviously at the AA. So it shows that hard work does pay off. Keep working hard at your dreams um, because, you know, things will get better. So yeah, keep it going. Keep going. Even through this lockdown, you know, if you're feeling bad, just try and keep going as best you can. Uh, but obviously don't burn yourself out or don't, uh, you know, tie yourself out because then things will just go downhill. Uh, and we don't want that really, do we? Uh, so anyway, now on to what subjects I would have studied at A-levels. It's pretty similar, to be honest. I would have done probably four subjects at A-level because, you know, you, you start off with five, then you drop to four or three. So I would have done art, DT, maths, and then I probably would have done business or Spanish as my fourth um, because I think just that sort of collection of um, that collection of subjects really sort of gives you a, a wide understanding of architectural study um, and knowledge towards the subject. So yeah, that, that's, um, that's what I would have done. In terms of the International Baccalaureate, obviously A-level is all exam based. The International Baccalaureate um, had coursework and exams. So for business, it was, I think, 40% coursework, 60% exam based. For math, uh, for higher DT, it was again the same ratios, um, however just reversed, so it was 60% coursework, 40% exam based, and then art was 100% coursework based, and that is uh, actually not the same with A-level, because you have an art exam in A-level, which is I think 10 hours long or something, um, but you have um, that amount of time to create an art piece or whatever, uh, but you have the whole two years to prepare for that I suppose. Um, and then in Standard English, it was, uh, I think, 40% coursework, 60% exam-based. And higher ma um, and Standard Maths was 80% exam-based and 20% coursework-based. And then Ab initio Spanish was 30% coursework-based, 10% um, oral examination-based, and then 60% exam-based. So they still weighted quite highly on exams, um, or quite heavily on exams if you think about it, but it definitely was useful for me to do the International Baccalaureate as a course. Now if you're looking to do your GCSEs and stuff, you know, it really doesn't matter what subjects you pick at that point. Um, just make sure that you have that art and DT, I suppose, um, in your GCSEs if you're doing your GCSEs. Uh, and then if you're doing your middle years program as well, which is what I did again, uh, make sure you get maths and uh, make sure you get uh, art and DT involved in those two as well just as a little um, sort of topic at the end of the video I suppose uh, but yeah that's about it for today um, everyone thank you so much for watching this uh, shorter video but it's definitely one that's worthwhile just thinking about because you are making those decisions now and they will affect what, um, what you want to do in later life and uh, your university stuff that's about it for today everyone thank you so much for watching if you did like the video hit that like button and if you're new around here please do hit that subscribe button I'm still getting about 70 or 80 percent of you watching this video not subscribed so that would do me such a huge favor thank you so much um, and if you really like the video then hit that notification bell and uh, that will notify you when I next upload again it's around every three days but yeah Thank you so much for watching everyone and uh, peace. See ya.